morning everybody it's Tuesday and uh, wanted to give a quick update on our <laughs> nightmare house in Haley actually it's on Haley Avenue in Slidell Louisiana and uh, <clears throat> this is the property where we got it under contract and almost immediately found a buyer tenant I mean literally I put it up on Facebook and uh, buy or sell groups for uh, a lease to own, you know, rent to own, a lease option. And literally uh, that same night, this particular buyer had, had reached out to us the next day, showed her the property and she showed up with 10,000 in cash, which we took and took to the title company in our haste to get this deal done. This was literally within a day or two of me starting working with Nathaniel, we had this house under contract. And um, so we were super excited, you know, here we are day two. I think we're, we got the deposit in hand already. I mean, we were riding high and uh, you know, everything's fine and it gets to the title company and it's not so good anymore. And it wasn't things we would have found on a preliminary title search. Um, you know, a couple of these things didn't pop up until well into the process. So, you know, we could have avoided some of it, but maybe not all of it. But I guess my point is there's steps and things you're supposed to do that we skipped in that case because she had the money and we were, you know, had just started this partnership and, you know, we were eager and excited. And so we let her move into the property and we skipped some steps and, and boy, is it cost us, right? That's why we're in this trouble now because I've got this buyer that's in the property and I can't I can't clear the title and she's already bought appliances and moved in and I mean it's 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 gonna be a struggle so the seller has been begging us to you know he doesn't want us to unravel the deal he wants more time to work with his ex-wife who's the one holding up the title with some kind of a loan or something she took against it and making things even worse the bank has has an, had an attorney contact our title company and us saying that we can that the, the bank can no longer speak to us or our seller about the property because the ex-wife has to do it because her name is the only one on this loan or whatever that's securing the title so anyway it's still a convoluted mess i can't unravel it and i i don't see an end in sight and neither does our rep at the title company and so we're stuck that's where we're at we've got we've got this the buyer tenant is in the house and we can't clear the title that's where we're at so game plan z which is our 56th attempt to fix this problem that again was caused by not following all the steps that we needed to follow and trying to take a shortcut so anyway do you think i'm saying that for several several times for a reason Yes, I am. I, I'm trying to have you live and learn through my idiotic mistakes so you don't make the same ones and get stuck in the same position. So yes, we skipped some steps and now we're stuck in this spot. So new solution for us is we are now trying to locate a, another property that would be suitable for this particular buyer in Slidell, Louisiana, where her property that, that we put her in now is located. If we can find her a property, um, she has not paid rent for February, so she's got, and I, I have her just kind of holding on to that money. So what we'll do is if we can find her another property, she likes it, we'll move her over there and I'll just have her keep the February money and, and, and use that for expenses to move her stuff to the new place just down the street. And hopefully that works. If not, we'll have the $10,000 deposit. We could shave off another little chunk out of that too if we had to. You know, if she box at it at the number I give her, then I'll offer to pay for a moving company. I'll just pay them directly. That'll probably cost me less than 1400 bucks. I don't know how much stuff she has, but I don't think it's that much. So anyway, that's uh, <laughs> that's what we're doing on that one now. So we're, we're in a mad search for uh, a a house that'll be suitable in Slidell, Louisiana. It needs to be like a 3-2. The house that she's in is a 4-2. Um, 
but yeah, so that's what we're doing. I've got Grant, my one of my partners, Johnny, who does all the technical stuff and the back end stuff for us. Is, he's even looking a little bit for us and, and helping us pull properties to help us try to find a new property in Slidell for this uh, seller. So that's what we're gonna do with that one, guys. <laughs> Just an update on that. That's still lurking out there. I mean, you know, again, just also something that's important to point out. We could have just walked away from this weeks ago and just said, hey, screw you, buyer, that we uh, that we hooked up and put in this property. But that's not the way I wanna do things or and my partners feel the same way, which is a nice thing. And Nathaniel, which I like about him too, is you know very concerned that we do, you know, even though we could just walk away and say, screw it, because we didn't get our money and it didn't work out for us financially. But in our in our haste and, and you know in, in in our actions in this particular situation, we put this buyer, you know, I mean ultimately look, the responsibility is on the buyer to everybody's responsible for themselves, right? We're all adults. And she had a decision to make and she made a poor decision too. But look, we were involved in it too. I mean we weren't encouraging to encouraging her to do it at all. In fact we we uh, discouraged her and we tried to talk her out of doing it, moving in so early, but it was it was moving earlier, don't do the deal. And she had another home she was looking at. So we rolled the dice and we're paying for it now. You know, we're paying for it. But even though we, we, we did try to talk her out of it somewhat, uh, we still let her do it. And, you know, I feel some sense of obligation to her as does Nathaniel and as do my partner. So I just want to point that out, guys. We're not, we're not, you know, on the hook for any kind of legal, you know, there's nothing they could do to us. We walked away. We have no obligation as far as, you know, getting in trouble or the only obligation we have is moral, right? And and that's honestly, that's probably the most important one to, to me and, and the guys that I work with. And in this business, if you don't have that, then it can be really dirty. And I, I don't want anything to do with that. I really don't. I, I'm, I'm all about doing the right things at this point in my life, whether it's houses and, and this business or just life in general treat people the way you want to be treated be honest the truth will set you free and you know those sayings are there for a reason and they're they've lasted as long as they have because they're they're true for the most part right the truth will set you free it's better just to be honest with these people from the jump right i think i mean why beat around the bush and why pretend it's something it's not. I'd rather just tell them, I'm an investor. Here's what I'm trying to do. Can we work something out? If it doesn't make sense for you now, I understand completely. Call me back if your situation should change down the road and things don't move for you the way you're hoping they do. And I, I hope they do too. But if they don't, here's some creative options that I can I can show you and that I can work with you on and we can, we can you know, maybe salvage the situation. In fact, you know, and in some of these creative scenarios, you'll come out better financially than you would if you sold it conventionally. So that's all I do, guys. I'm just going to be honest about it. And I just, I think it's the best policy, like I said, in, in, in anything you're doing. Not that I'm some kind of a life coach, but oh boy, I'd be the, I'd be the, I mean, if you want to hear things not to do, I'm probably a really good uh, teacher of that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know. If you want to, if, if we're looking at mistakes you can learn from, then my God, I'm a, I'm the, uh, whatever that book of encyclopedias is called. That's me when it comes to mistakes. So, so that's why I say I'm never judging anybody when I, when I chuckle or, or laugh at some of this, you know, our behaviors, I'm laughing at us, not you. Trust me. Any behavior you're doing now that I'm, I'm chuckling at, I'm chuckling at it because I'm thinking, Gosh, I've done that so many times myself, you know. I'm not, certainly not standing in judgment of anybody. I know I say that a lot, guys. I just, I hate, I don't want to come off like I'm some kind of a, you know, better than anybody else who's, who's fallen off the wagon, so to speak, and hasn't sent offers in for a couple weeks or whatever. I get it. Trust me. I've been there. I've done it. You know, I'm trying desperately not to do it this time. You know, I'm, I'm with you, okay? I'm not making fun of anybody. I, I totally understand. And uh, I get it. It's tough. It's hard out there. We're all trying to make it. Hey, you took more steps than most people just 
reaching out and just joining these groups and just listening to some of these webinars, free or not. Just submitting one offer. That's one more than the person who's never even tried anything has done. So you're you're at least trying something, you know. Give yourself some credit. I get it, you know. Just if, if it's not the time for you to do it now, you know, bank the knowledge you've, you've learned so far and then come back to it at some point. Look for another niche in the business. It'll work better for you. Niche. Niche. I'm, I said niche. My mom's going to get mad at me. It's niche. Find another one that, that works for you, you know. But uh, don't quit on this business. Don't quit on yourself. I mean, if the business isn't for you, it isn't for you. But find, but don't, don't let it be because you didn't put in the effort, right? Don't let it be because of that. And I'm telling you, that 98% rule is true, guys. It's very true. I've seen it. So anyway, all right. We, had that, we did that whole speech yesterday. So anyway, that's all I got to say today. And uh, I hope, you know, hope that helps a little bit. I don't know how it would help, but I guess the moral of today's story is don't skip steps, guys, if you can ever possibly avoid it. it, it you know, it's a gamble, and when it doesn't pay off, which is probably going to be most of the time when you try to take a shortcut in this business, um, it, it, it can really cause problems. And like I said, I've been dealing with this for a month now because I took a shortcut. I, I caused the problem. So... Here is the cause and result, guys. Follow your steps. Follow your steps. If you want to work with us, reach out to me via Messenger. We're looking for the 2% of you who are going to uh, start investing and, and, and not ever stop. That's that's who we're looking for. Uh, but you 98 percenters that uh, still haven't figured it out and are still trying to do it, please keep submitting your offers, even if it's sporadically. We still love you. We don't We don't judge. And, uh, you know, a couple offers a week is better than zero, right? Keep keep the blood pumping, even if it's just barely trickling. So put a couple offers in. Keep yourself in the game. And when you, can, when you can manage it, get back on track to three to five a day. Okay, guys, have a great Tuesday. I will talk to you next time. Bye.